I just heard some outside again. Okay, Moba. Dolores. I was born in Bay City, Michigan. I was raised in South Shore area of Massachusetts. I had a pretty good upbringing. Um, it was, it had its times of good and bad, but after I graduated high school, I moved to the SeaTac area of Washington State, where I eventually met a girl who I married and had a, started a family, had a home, had a decent job, and uh, doing well. This picture is me when I was two months old and my mom, my sister. This was soon after I moved to Washington State. I think I was 19, me and my mom at my 26th birthday party. That was right before everything went bad for me. When my marriage fell apart, it kind of led to a destructive path in my life where I became addicted to drugs and which eventually led to being homeless. And when I came to Florida in the year 2000, I was hoping it would be a change, but it just never changed. I was immediately back doing the same things. My biological father committed suicide. My stepfather abandoned me. There was a lot that put a wedge between my family and me. 20-something years later, my life just was in and out of jail, uh, just going from place to place, homelessness, never really having much of anything that I could hold on to. Daryl, he came over to do some yard work for me. He had put a sign out in front of his mom's house and he came over, it was in 2016, and he had just gotten out of prison and he got caught down, I think, West Palm area for making meth. I think he, he spent about a year and a half or two years in prison. He looked pretty good then. But then later when I saw him, he was, he had gone back to the streets and he was really in bad shape. It led to a lot of physical problems and also a, uh, a, a tragic event where I um, was attacked while I was sleeping and didn't realize that my brain was bleeding afterwards and I collapsed, fell into a coma. It was, you know, looking like the end. My mom had got a call for her to come down and take me off of life support. She kind of put it off and in doing so, um, I woke up when she was on her way to, to, to sign the papers to take me off of life support. I was missing the left-hand side of my head. It was kind of a hard road to recovery. I couldn't use my right side very well. I couldn't feed myself or, or walk. I needed a walker. Um, I couldn't talk very well. My mom brought me here to her home and uh, helped me get back to where I needed to be health-wise, but mentally I was still in that place of addiction and brokenness, and which led to, I, I went back out and used again, and um, something told me to stop after a week, and I came back, and that's, uh, when Steve Cooper came to my door. Steve 
So how I met Daryl, involved in a uh, evangelism uh, discipleship training program, and, and part of that is going out into the neighborhood and teaming up with someone and sharing the gospel. And he came to the door and uh, if there was anything he needed prayer and he shared a little bit about he's living with his mom and, and yes, he could use prayer. We got to share our testimony about what God had done in our lives. And uh, if he's interested in doing some kind of a Bible study or something like that to learn more about God, we would be very interested in meeting it at another time if he would be willing to do that. And he said he would. Yeah, so we learn about God. He recognizes Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. he, he sees him out of out of all the, the people, this guy that's a, a tax collector. He responded to the gospel and, and wanted to, to get together. He and I and, and my dad ended up meeting one of the parks here and just going through some simple discovery Bible study time together. Just hearing him share about his his past, um, his past of you know being homeless for, for over 20 years, you know, sleeping on the street and someone taking his bag and beating him to where he was unconscious and ended up in the hospital and in a coma. Uh, he had a aneurysm as a result. And so they were basically pronouncing him dead. And his mom was even gonna go down to unplug him. And she delayed that a couple days. And thankfully she did. The Lord used that because then he ended up waking up. They told me the gospel of Jesus, which I had, you know, heard about Jesus, but I never really, knew him and what he had done by giving his life so I can have a new life. Because I had given up on life for a long time. It was the follow through. I was introduced to a family environment that I had never seen before in my life. Just a loving family environment, uh, a people who cared for each other and cared for the Lord gave me tools and resources to find what I needed in the Bible to help me to learn more about who Jesus was. And um, it led to my understanding of how powerful he is. We'd spend a lot of time together. I mean, he, we invited Daryl and his mom came to our Thanksgiving that we do at the park. And so it was just great to have that time, just more and more fellowship. We also, there's a, a group of us that would get together and we'd go out once a week, share the gospel in the neighborhoods or downtown. We would meet back at one of our homes for a little time of, of prayer and worship. And so he started coming to that and he would open up about the, the love and the fellowship that, that he felt. It was like nothing he had really experienced before. And he was just thought that was great that they, people would open up their homes to to have this time. You've got kids running around and everything, so it was really a, a family. I grew to love Jesus, you know, in a, a short amount of time. It was very, very powerful for me. Given um, where I had come from, I wanted to go back into the community, find others who were still living in brokenness and who were lost and far from Jesus to show them that, you know, I came from this place and now I'm here. What's up, guys? We're just out in the community offering prayer as usual. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, oh, I don't, I don't, yeah. I can't uh, walk on the earth without prayer, man. Yeah, so, uh, I know, I know the, the, you always need prayer. Yeah. Uh, what what specifically can I be praying for you about today? I I know what you went through. Uh, you know I I've heard I heard you, you talk about it. So my name's Daryl. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. I know I know I know who you are, buddy. I remember you. All right. I'm just gonna get say a quick sure. prayer for you. Father God, thank you so much for leading me here today. Thank you for who you are and all you do in our lives. We were going out and doing our our harvest times and sharing the gospel. He he really enjoyed that. The first time we went out and I had said, hey, you know, no pressure. You can just hang back and just kind of shadow me. Uh, if you feel prompted, go ahead and step in, but th there's no pressure. And first guy we walk up to and start talking to, he just jumps, jumps right in, loving on this guy, offering prayer, praying for him, sharing the gospel, sharing the three circles, gospel sharing tool. And he was reached by someone coming to his door and sharing the gospel. And so it's like, hey, I want to go and, and do that that same thing that was modeled for him so now he's wanting to go and do that he started talking about like hey this idea of 
doing kind of a discovery Bible study focused on the homeless and kind of promoting that in, in some way in the community. I don't fully believe in all that. I believe, you know, I believe the earth was created. I believe the trees and the sky and the moon, stars. I believe all that was created, but I ain't sure that God created it. Well, then who would create it? I don't know. So if, you know, as as human beings, um, do you, you say he, it was created, but you don't think that we as humans created it, right? No, it was, it was no, a supernatural being, right? It was it was something supernatural that had the ability to. Way more intelligent than us. Right. We're not intelligent enough to create a tree. Right. You know, it, it took someone way more intelligent than all of us. I don't believe people done it. Right. You know. So, I lived it. I I was on the street where where I was yeah. overlooked and and persecuted and beat up by police just because they could. And God bless you, Darrell. I think that you experienced that and you came out of it a, a whole uh, as a better person and, and, and uh, inspired to do a mission. Now. But but that was only because of the Holy Spirit that did that to me. It's not enough for people in a church to say, yeah, I'm saved by Jesus. You have to live that way. You have to go out there and help your, your, your brother who is suffering. Right. And if you just go to church and say, yeah, I'm saved by Jesus, and then Monday morning, go back to life as normal. No, Jesus himself says that's not going to do it. That's why, that's why we do what we do. We come out here and, and give of our time and of yeah, our resources. You, you've got to live and, that message. Right. How do you get that message out there into a society that condemns poor people? It's one person at a time, one, one true believer at a time. You know, yeah, I, I understand, you know, there are churches and, and ministries that do things for the homeless and for the poor, but they aren't willing to do things with the poor. They, they'll drop something off and go, but you and I, we sit here and we, we you make breakfast. We, we talk with people, we get to know them and their lives. A lot of times, homeless people are overlooked by society. Um, a lot of times when I was there, just anybody being kind to me was a blessing because, you know, uh, people can be mean, you know. Um, there are so many places that are willing to do things for the homeless, but not with the homeless. And that's where I want to make a change, is to go in and do things with these people. I've got to know some really amazing people. Sometimes it's very encouraging. Sometimes it can be dis discouraging, but still I persevere because Jesus never gave up. I want to do everything I can to bring honor and glory to him, not, not to myself. I don't do this for, for my own glory. I do this to bring the hope of Jesus to others. Part about this place. Um, the fellowship, the, the, the family atmosphere, um, different people from different churches, different walks of life, uh, all believers in Christ, at least most of them, and, uh, but they are uh, giving of their heart, their time, their resources, just to a great ministry, a great ministry. All right, Bob, please. Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you, Lord. We come to you very humbly. We come to you, Lord, and I uh, just lift you up. And uh, we know that you're almighty. We know that you're the God that can... Appreciate it. All right, you have a blessed day. Okay, you too. Hola, ¿cómo está? 
Yeah. Two. Sure. Absolutely. God bless. Have a blessed day. Uh, how many can you use? There's two meals in each bag. Three meals? How about I just give you two bags? Nothing has worked. Not not jail, not not injury, not um, you know, uh, prison, nothing. Nothing. I went to uh, rehabs, AA, NA, you know, all, all these things. Nothing nothing did. It was the Holy Spirit that, that changed me and, and removed that affliction from my life. I I haven't been able to keep up with him. He's been so busy. And it's wonderful. It's the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Being a second mother to him. <laughs> but it's a great story, and it's not a story, it's true. You know, we all have uh, some kind of testimony, or, or there's someone in our life that you're just like, oh, there, there's, no, there's no hope for that person, you know, deep down. It's like to see Daryl, to see how the Lord used him and turned his life around is really inspiring because it's like there's there's no no one that he can't save god has the power to to do anything and it's just so amazing to see that change in daryl uh, and i'm blessed to be able to to see that it continues to encourage me to stay involved and to do, go out into the harvest i'll admit i'm still nervous about doing it in spite of what's taking place with daryl it's like but it also is encouraging me to look at what has taken place in Daryl. So here we go. I was gifted through uh, a great couple, Dave and Heather, who have a bike shop, my church friends that uh, pitched in and got me a e-bike. The bike shop gave me a trailer also. So I'm able to load it with food, clothes, sleeping bags, whatever I, I have available to give out and am able to go into the community and, and reach these people rather than trying to carry it somewhere or them having to go to me, I can go out and meet them. Hold up item to go serve the homeless or whoever I might come across. This part of my ministry, I like to pretty much serve the, uh, the homeless community, the ones that um, don't have a roof over their head. Um, the ones that are often overlooked, go out and uh, just show them kindness, the love of Jesus. All right, pray for me and to, uh, to go out and find, uh, find someone who is far from Jesus right now that uh, I can help in some way. I was homeless and it put a wedge between my mother and I. Um, she is the only one left in my family. My sister passed away in 2013. She was comfortable living by herself, but she allows me to sleep on the couch in her front room. And, and I'm perfectly content with that. Uh, we, have a, we have a great relationship now. And uh, I, I believe it's the first time since I was little that she feels that she could be proud of me and for what I've been doing and and it's only been through through the hand up and the love of the Lord and these people who have helped me that um, I'm finally in a place where I love life again <laughs>